come to the island with two million more Chinese nationalists. The CIA wrote a report to President Truman titled Possible Developments in Taiwan, and they stamped it secret. <coughs> and it remained a secret document for years and years and years. Finally, it was declassified. And here's what that secret CIA memo to President Truman said. The native population of Taiwan would welcome release from Chinese control, but it is not now strong enough to stage a successful revolt. In other words, the oppression is so strong that people cannot revolt. What are we supposed to do? The CIA report went on. There is strong sentiment in Taiwan favoring independence, but the situation is complicated by the conflicting interests of the native Taiwanese and the Chinese nationalist elements. The Taiwanese bitterly resent the performance of the nationalist administration. The Chinese rulers have exploited the native population to the limit without regard for their welfare. This is what the CIA was telling President Truman. United States support to the Taiwanese aspirations would require taking over authority from the established nationalist regime. So once again, nothing happened. The white terror period continued. The Americans knew about it and they did nothing but put a secret stamp on it to keep it quiet. Finally, people in the State Department who had read the reports and were shocked at President Truman's inaction began plotting an overthrow of Chiang Kai-shek. Between March and July of 1949, the Department of State, George Keenan and Dean Acheson plotted an overthrow of Chiang Kai-shek. George Keenan said, we've got to make it look like a spontaneous independence movement in Formosa. Dean Acheson assigned a diplomat to continue the plotting of the uh, overthrow, uh, a man named Livingston Merchant. And he was assigned to implement the overthrow of Chiang Kai-shek. He studied the situation and he decided that there was a particular general, ROC general, that was the best candidate to replace Chiang Kai-shek, General Sun Li Jin. The Americans made arrangements for General Sun to travel to Tokyo and meet with Douglas MacArthur, who would raise the issue of a, of a coup d'etat. General Sun did go to Tokyo and meet with MacArthur. MacArthur told him, if you overthrow Chiang Kai-shek, we will support you. But General Sun was loyal to the ROC and instead went back to Taiwan and reported to Chiang Kai-shek, the Americans want to overthrow you. <laughs> the next month, August 1949, the CIA bought the civil air transport the Civil Air Transport was a company that was developed during World War II uh, to help supplement the war against the Japanese in China. And at this point, they had a fleet of airplanes. The CAA bought it, and in August 49, it was the largest airline in Taiwan, run by the American Central Intelligence Agency. In October, October 10th of 1949, the CIA began their secret missions flying into China for spy missions. Um, November 3rd, 1949. Reports continued to come out of Taiwan about the horror of the white terror period. And so the American Consul General gave yet another memorandum to Chiang Kai-shek complaining about the misgovernment in Formosa. 
Meanwhile, the Pentagon sent military intelligence operatives to Taiwan, and they began their operations alongside the CIA. That year, that the CIA set up their own private airline in Taiwan, and that the Defense Department set up spy operations, both of which worked with the secret police of Chiang Kai-shek. The United States government estimated there were 10,000 arrests and over 1,000 executions. The American spies knew what was going on and looked the other way. More than looked the other way, they cooperated with the secret police that was conducting this terror campaign. Finally, the New York Times had an article about what was going on in Taiwan because nobody in America knew because it was all marked secret. The New York Times article said that there was indiscriminate ferocity in the campaign against the Taiwanese people. But that was one newspaper article. Nothing else happened. Finally, May 1950, the men in the Department of State, still sickened by the reports of what was coming out of Taiwan and the inaction of the American government, tried to plan another overthrow attempt of Chiang Kai-shek. This time it was the Secretary of State himself, John Foster Dulles. He and Dean Rusk, later a top American government official, uh, planned an overthrow of Chiang Kai-shek once again. And this time, because it involved the Secretary of State, they took their plan to President Truman directly. And he said, no, leave Chiang Kai-shek alone. One month later, June, 19, uh, 20, June 25th of 1950, the Korean War broke out. And Taiwan's fate was sealed for the rest of the time up to today's date. The outbreak of the CIA, caused, uh, the outbreak of the Korean War caused a huge influx of American military personnel. The CIA increased their station. We had 600 spies in the uh, uh, CIA station office. During the Korean War, the CIA made 15,000 secret missions into Korea and China from Taiwan. For the next 20 years, the CIA director had more authority and more power than the American ambassador. When Chen Jing Kao was president, he only met with the American ambassador four times during his whole time he was in office. But he met weekly with the CIA because he knew that was where the power was. And his spies had been working with the American spies for years. Chang Ching Kao knew that the American CIA would give them money, weapons, and training. All the American ambassador gave them was talk. July 19th, 1950. Finally, the troubles in Taiwan had gotten to the attention of the American Congress. President Truman spoke to Congress about the problems in Taiwan. President Truman said, the present military neutralization of Formosa is without prejudice to political questions affecting the island. In other words, yes, we're doing what we're doing, but the ROC doesn't own Taiwan, and the fact that they're doing what they're doing doesn't prevent future change, not to worry. We have